Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at AFDDs again. Now these are the arc fault detection devices, and we've seen these in uh, several other videos. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at uh, four different uh, versions of these, some from different manufacturers, and of course they're all uh, slightly different in design as well. Now uh, AFDDs uh, as a product do actually work, but they only work in certain situations. They're certainly not some kind of wonderful fitted everywhere and it magically protects everything. But uh, in the right circumstances and with the right type of faults, then they do actually work. And uh, what we've got here is a uh, testing rig which uh, we use just for demonstration purposes on these four devices. So uh, let's have a quick look at that. I've already covered that in a previous video, so uh, I'm not going to do it in any great detail. So this is what we've got, and this is all disconnected from the supply at the moment, so no danger at the moment. What we've got here is four different arc fault detection devices here. We've got the Eaton one we've seen before. This one is a Wilex branded one, it's actually made by Siemens. Two module device, a Proteus one here, again a two module thing. And then this one also a Wilex, but this is a single module, so uh, more on the lines of a standard circuit breaker at RCBO size. So uh, four different ones there. The uh, load we have today is this uh, electric heater plugged in here. I'm using that one because it has variable settings so we can get various different currents uh, going through that one. Current will be displayed on this clamp meter here. And then for the actual arc itself we're going to use these adjustable contacts we've got here. These are made of brass. Obviously we can adjust the uh, contact gap there and also uh, rotate them there to hopefully get a arc going between them. Now one important thing about arc fault detection devices, which uh, as we've seen in the other videos, they don't work on very low current, so that one we had a lamp there didn't uh, get very far because the current was too low. This one claims to need at least 2.5 amps to operate, as do uh, the others here. The uh, Wilex one apparently can work down to 1.5 amps, but uh, certainly need a couple of amps flowing. And then the second thing you need is that uh, you need an actual arc here to be of a certain length of time and a certain amount of energy to be involved. So a small spark, whatever, probably won't trip the device. It does need to be a uh, particular arc of a particular type. Mainly why we've got these fairly large uh, brass contacts here, so we can hopefully get a decent amount of arcing going on between those. And the reason I know this is safe to touch is because it plugs in here, so you can clearly see that uh, it's completely disconnected from the supply. Certainly wouldn't want it to rely on a switch, because of course switches can and do fail. Now we'll try the eating one first, and we've got the contacts fully closed there. So shouldn't be any kind of arcing going on. Clamp meter is on with zero, obviously. So turn on the device. Just goes through that three colours, and then green is normal operation on this particular one. Uh, current we have there is about 2.2 amps, or 2.23, 2.24. That's for the heater on its lowest setting. Now this thing is supposed to work down to about 2.5 amps, so that's slightly below. But let's just have a go and see if we can get it to arc there. So what we'll do is to slowly open the contacts, and then uh, see if we can get the thing to trip. Okay, so there we go, that has tripped, so if we uh, close the contacts there, turn it on, and we see we've got a uh, two yellow flashes there to indicate the type of fault which we had. And then it goes back to green for normal operation. So that's with 2.2 amps there. Let's try it with the higher setting. That's the second setting there, that's about 4.2 amps, so uh, somewhat above the minimum 2.5 we needed. So Try that again. Yep, and that trips uh, pretty much straight away. And again, we'll reset the device. Just getting a single flash that time. We'll have a look at what those mean uh, later on. So now we've got the heater on its fullest setting, and it's about 8.4 amps there, so considerably more than I had before. So same again, so we can get an arc between the contacts. Yep, now it goes, trips pretty much straight away. And again, if we turn it back on, get that single flash there to indicate the trip cause was in fact an arc. And it's worth bearing in mind that these devices are traditional circuit breakers, so you've got overload and short circuit protection in there. And these also have an RCD included as well, and it's a Type A, and that's the same for all of these devices. So this is really a three-in-one device that does everything now let's have a look at this one. This is the uh, Wilex one, or basically it's a Siemens uh, unit here. Two modules, this one. It's a fairly traditional RCBO here. Again, the Type A is indicated here. And it's got the arc fault detection module as a separate thing on the side. They're basically just clipped together 
like that. Now this one and the other two there, which we'll get to later, this wires up slightly differently. Line coming at the bottom, as in your traditional consumer unit with the bus bar there. And then the neutral in is actually this flying lead here. Normally that will go to your neutral bar in the consumer unit. We don't have a consumer unit here, so I've just used this uh, circuit break here just to join the two together, incoming neutral here and the neutral for the device. That's not actually doing anything, just being used as a convenient sized terminal. And then the load comes out the top here, pretty much in the usual way. So uh, let's turn on this one. And uh, you can see this has got a red indicator, and on this one red indicates normal operation, so somewhat different from this which had green as normal operation. So uh, starting out then with a low current, the 2.2 uh, amps or so there, as we had before. So let's see if we can get a bit of an arc going there. Let's see if we can get this one to trip. Well, there's certainly a bit of arcing going on there, but as we see, it's not actually tripping. So let's turn it up to the next level. So current's now up to 4.2 amps on the medium setting. Let's try it again. OK, so that did trip there. Took a few attempts there. But nevertheless, uh, the thing has tripped. And this really highlights an important difference between these in that the microprocessor inside these, or basically it's a computer inside, the actual software isn't the same for different manufacturers. So whatever Eaton have put in here is not what Wilex or Siemens have put in this one. And again, these are not devices which are designed to trip instantly necessarily. They have to analyse the arc and look for a particular pattern of arcing, and also has to be a certain amount of energy involved over a certain amount of time and various other factors. So Certainly some differences uh, going on with that one. Now let's just turn this back on. We should see the indication here not be red in this case. It should be uh, something else. So I'll press the button first there. So we've got the yellow flashing there. And on the uh, information for this one, basically a single flash repeating is essentially the series or parallel arc detected. So again, pretty much what you would expect there. And in terms of resetting these, you have to actually uh, then press the button, and then it goes back to the red, which is normal operation. Seems a bit of an odd choice to have red as normal, but nevertheless, that's what we've got. Now, let's jump to the third level on that one. So about 8.4 amps there, so that's the higher setting. And again, we'll try the arcing there, see what we can get. OK, well, that was pretty instant that time, so barely got any kind of arc going, and it tripped off straight away. And again, we turn back on, just have to... Uh, poke the button in. And again, it's that same yellow flash there indicating an arc was detected. And then if we press this again, then it goes back to red. Again, normal operation. And these do have a test function as well, so if you actually press the button in, then it will actually trip the thing as the uh, same with the test button on this one. So that's the uh, two module Wilex model, so let's move on to the Proteus one and see what that one does. Now moving on, we've got the uh, Proteus one here wired up. Again, this is similar in design to this physically. It's got the line coming at the bottom. Neutral on a flying lead. One notable difference is the flying lead on this is massively longer than the Wilex version. And then your load connects on the top to those in the usual way that a fairly typical thing would. And again, two module wide here, and it's got the three functions in circuit breaker, type A, RCD, and of course the arc fault detection as well. Now the only difference here, this is actually a 32 amp device, the uh, 32 there, but shouldn't really make any difference with this test as we're not going up anywhere near that. And Proteus things are sold by City Electrical Factors in the UK for those that may not know. So let's uh, turn this one on and again see what we've got. Contacts are fully closed. So it's on there. Now this has an amber LED in there, and again that's to indicate normal operation. So again, different from the other two, so that's sort of one of each colour so far. Heat is on, current with a low setting again, 2.24 amps there, as we had before. So let's try a bit of arcing, see what happens on this one. Okay, well there it is, tripped uh, pretty much straight away there, so that certainly seems to work. Now I'll just turn this on again. 
And what we're getting there is basically one flash fairly quickly there. It may not be entirely obvious on the camera that says just one single repeating flash there in the amber. And according to information, uh, one flash is a series arc fault, which again is what we've got, so again, no surprise there. As with others, this has the test button as well, but again, it's a fairly similar concept. But again, the software inside this is likely to be different from these, and of course, different from this as well. So it's now gone back to the uh, steady light for normal operation. So let's go up to the next power level. So about 4.2 amps again there, so see what happens on this one. Okay, that went pretty much straight away there. And again, just reset the uh, contacts. I'm getting just that single flash again there, as we had before. And at the high level, that's around 8.4 amps. Yep, and again, pretty much uh, instant trip on that. So that certainly appears to work. And again, just got the single flash there for the series arc fault. And that's what we've got here. It's basically in series with the load. And of course, uh, that's what it's indicating. Now finally we've got this uh, item here. This is also a Wilex one, but this is in a single module. So essentially it's this one, but all made into a single width module there. So in terms of installing these, it's certainly more convenient, as it's all in a single item there. Neutral again on the flying lead here. And again, notably, this is actually quite a short flying lead here, so it had a very wide consuming it. Could be some difficulties in actually getting this to reach because that's as supplied. And you see, it's only what sort of eight inches long or something, but nevertheless, uh, that's what they've supplied with it. And it's pretty much the same length as we had on this other one over here, which we've looked at. So there we go. Line comes in the bottom, and then you load it on the top there with the two wires, pretty much the same as any normal RCBO would be. So uh, this is actually a six amp one. Now that current actually goes at eight, so that may be an issue, or we'll soon see. But we'll start out on the lowest level. And this has the little indicator here, just underneath the uh, actual trip lever here. And this is actually the test button here as well. So pretty much the same as this, only sort of all combined into one. So 2.2 amps there at the bottom range on the lowest setting. And the contacts are, of course, closed. So uh, let's just see if we can get a bit of an arc on this one. Let's see how this works. Well, certainly a bit of arcing there, but as we see, it's not actually tripping on that power setting. So let's turn it up to the next level. So current turned up there, so 4.2 amps there. And bearing in mind, this is only a 6 amp circuit breaker, so uh, that's sort of two thirds of the way to its maximum rating. Let's try that one. So as you see there, not uh, tripping there, so let's turn it up to the high level, which is actually above the rating of this device, but nevertheless, let's do it anyway. Now that's actually about 8.4 amps, which is of course representing an overload condition for a 6 amp circuit breaker, although it won't uh, certainly trip anytime soon because circuit breakers don't trip instantly they get to the rating on the device. So um, 8.4 amps, and let's get the arc going. Okay, so there we go. So that did eventually trip there. But bearing in mind that was at considerable overload, about uh, 8 amps there on a 6 amp device. So uh, 
again, rather different results than we had from the others there. And again, if we turn on, we should see the LED indication should be a different colour. So see that's just flashing uh, amber there, and one at a time. And as we saw with this one, that's the uh, series or parallel arc that's been detected. And again, this here is the actual test button, so if we press that, it should reset or uh, there we go, so it's now going to the red for normal operation. And again, if we press that, we should be able to trip the thing to confirm it's still working. And then just there it goes back to red when we've turned it on again. Now, just to complete this, what we've got here is just a normal RCD, so this doesn't have any arc fault detection device in it, and therefore, with any arcing will happen, of course, this won't trip or, in fact, do anything at all. Just do the uh, same again with the arcing here. But what we'll do is actually zoom in onto the contacts themselves so you can see what kind of arcing actually goes on there with the three power settings that we used before. So first of all then the low setting 2.2 amps. This is the medium setting at 4.2 amps. And then finally the high setting which is around 8.3 amps. So let's look there at some different arc fault detection devices, and as you can see, although it's with the same exact test setup and the same load, the results we got there were considerably different in terms of how quickly they tripped, or in fact whether they tripped at all. And this really is the whole point of these things, in that although they're made to the same standards, what's actually inside in terms of the uh, microprocessor and the software that's in there, it's certainly not the same between manufacturers. Each person has, of course, their own stuff that they've put in. So. Broadly, of course, complies with the standard, but uh, the actual individual details, of course, are different depending on which one you've chosen. And aside from that, of course, there's obviously other differences as well in terms of how large these things are, whether it's one, two or three modules. And even things like the indications on the front there, of course, are different as well. We've got one with green for normal, one with red for normal, and one with amber for normal. So uh, pretty much any combination you could consider to pick there. Now, uh, that's it for this video, but we will be doing more on our fault detection devices in the future, including with other types of fault, because so this is just a set of contacts. We're going to try some with actual damaged cables and things as well. But until then, thanks for watching.